Glory to God. I said glory to God. Once again, we want to specially welcome you to Wine Press Conference. I, I know that you have been blessed. I know you've been blessed. I've been getting testimonies. Even people watching online. Even people watching online. People in the live services. The power of God has been touching them in very unique ways. In very unique ways. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. Amen. Will you, will you please turn your Bibles and... This night is very special. I want to encourage you that if you have your mobile phones, all those kind of devices, you can take a minute and share the links of this service with all of your friends. And um, if you want to connect with us some more and receive a lot of spiritual resources, then you can also follow us on Twitter and on the, the handles will be displayed on the screen. They will follow us on Twitter, on, um, on Twitter on Facebook, on Instagram. And when you're tweeting or posting, use the hashtag, this is my wine press, or use the hashtag, wine press 2024. Glory to God. Hallelujah. want to thank all of the ministers that are here. Prophet Wali Akilaja is here. Thank you for coming. You know, and all of our own pastors, Pastor Femi Lale is here. Those I can see, you know, those I can just see in, just in my, in my sight, you know. I'm sure the other ones will would, um, appreciate them you know, from time. A amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. All right. Luke chapter 1 in verse 45. Yeah, Luke chapter 1 in verse 45. And tonight is a very special night because the power of God would meet you at the point of your need. You will be renewed in the spirit. You will be you will be renewed in the spirit. Glory to God. This is very powerful. So let me say something quickly here. Anytime you see people praying, and there is no change. Anytime you see people praying, and there is no change, because sometimes I've been asked over and over again. And people will ask me this question and say, I have been praying to get pregnant, but for the past seven years right now, I've not seen any kind of result. I've been diagnosed with a certain sickness, and I've been praying for a long time, and I've not seen any kind of result. Some other people will say things like, I have been praying about my finances, and I've not seen any result. And... I had to do a careful study of God's word to say when people are applying themselves to God's word and to prayer and they don't see the result, what could be the reason and what could they do to have a change? Let me say something to you quickly here. Many people in a meeting like this think the biggest part of the meeting is when you begin to pray and when you begin to say, come out and when you begin to say, there's someone here. As much as that is powerful, the biggest part of the meeting is hearing and sitting under God's word. Because it's the word of God that carries transformational power. Hallelujah. When you hear the word of God, it has a way of changing you as a person. The Bible says that, the Bible says, as he preached, he perceived he had faith to be healed. They didn't pray for him. He perceived he had faith to be healed. And he said, get up. And all of a, man, all of a sudden, the man that was impotent in his feet got up. And began to walk. Glory to God. I said glory to God. So anytime people are praying and there's no change. One of the things I've noticed. One of the things I've noticed. Anytime people are praying and there's no change. They've been praying about their finances. They've been praying to get married. They've been praying about a career. There could be a lot of reasons. But one of the things I've noticed. Fundamentally. When there is no change. Is because a negative mindset or a negative belief system is hindering their prayers. That's one of the key things I've noticed. Someone says, how do you know it? Look at the case of Israel. God told Israel. He said it would take them from Egypt and bring them into the promised land. Question. Did they move from Egypt to the promised land? No. They died in the wilderness. Even though God was committed to them. But the Bible says their mind will not allow them. They were not able to because of their mind. 
The second thing is that look at Zechariah. In the book of Luke, the angel appeared to Zechariah. Zechariah's visitation was different from Mary's visitation. Mary's visitation by an angel was the sovereign act of God. So when the angel appeared to Mary and says, you will have a child, Mary was shocked. She said, how will this happen? You know, and all of those things. But you know what, you know, you know what Mary said? Mary said, be it unto me according to your word. Mary never prayed for it. Mary was not operating the principle of faith. Mary was was a recipient of the sovereignty of God. But when it came to Zechariah, the angel said, I've come because of your prayers. That the Lord has heard your prayers. Listen to me. Zechariah was praying he will have a child. He had prayed for 20 years, 30 years. Because the Bible says his wife was stricken in age. But he had prayed. But as soon as the angel said you have a child, the same Zechariah that prayed said, how will it happen? He was, he was saying, how will it happen? And the angel said, how dare rest you, how dare rest you, challenge me, a messenger from the presence of God. Why am I saying this to you? Sometimes, the very things people pray for, they don't believe it can happen to them. And the reason why that happens is this. They've been in that situation for such a long time, it's difficult to just believe that the womb can open. It's difficult to just believe that the contract can come that way. It's difficult to believe that the addiction can be broken, that they can have an encounter of the Holy Ghost because they've not had it for such a long time. I, you know, <laughs> I got born again in those days where the theology around receiving the Holy Ghost was a tarry theology. I don't even know what the tarry theology means. You know, now there's a lot of knowledge. So we know the Holy Ghost is given. Oh, hey, Pastor Daniel, it's nice to see you. You know, all we have to do is to receive the Holy Spirit. All we have to do is to receive the Holy Spirit. But when I got born again, that was not the theology. The theology is that you have to pray and wait. And the Holy Ghost will come to you personally. As if he has not been poured out. And I remember that I'd gotten born again. I'd prayed for the Holy Ghost. The first year I'd gone. The second year I'd gone. The third year I'd gone. The fourth year I'd gone. I was getting exhausted. I was getting exhausted and frustrated because I was young and all of my friends that were receiving the Holy Ghost together, you know, we had gone on holiday and I was in the secondary school. And by the time we came back, we were about five or six. You know, five or four of them had received the Holy Ghost and were speaking in tongues. And it was just me and one other guy that had not received the Holy Spirit. How, how, you know, how, you know, and I was like, what is going on? Because I was thinking, if it's prayer, I pray more than these guys. And you know, I was thinking, if it's righteousness, in the basic human way of doing things, works, I'm, I'm, I think I'm holier than these guys. At least, at least one of them I know personally. And one day, one of, the, one of my Bible teachers told me, he said, all you have to do right now is to receive. It occurred to me that up till that time, I've been waiting for something to happen. I did not know that the Holy Ghost was poured out already. That all I had to do was receive. The moment I knew that, my God, I was praying. I can tell you when it was. I was praying. It was a weekday. I can't remember if it was Monday or Tuesday. I was praying. It was around 5.30 a.m. in the boarding school. I remember very well. HSC. Um, chart block. I was in the chart house. I was in the annex. The annex by the right. I remember clearly as I lifted up my mic. 5.30 in the morning. I just heard myself say, Bura, capo, sate, lebro, capo, yeah. Hey, but I've been waiting for five years. What changed? Revelation changed my mindset. Revelation changed my mindset. If you mean, listen to me. The religious way says, if you want to make your prayer powerful, increase volume. Volume does not increase power in prayer. If you want to make your prayer powerful, increase revelation content. Increase revelation content. I'm not saying you cannot be passionate. But what makes prayer powerful is the content of the word of God in prayer. Praise God. So anytime people are praying and there's no change. Maybe you've been trying to get married and there's no change. Pay attention to the mindset. Ask yourself. What area of my mindset do I have to deal with? What negative mindset is holding me back? Because God is not that wicked. I love the way my neighbor says it when I'm young, when I was young. Permit me the non-Yorubas. Permit me the non-Yorubas. My neighbor, till today, I never know what it means in English, so I can't translate it. But my neighbor would just say, Olo You know? 
What does that mean? God is not difficult. Is it difficult or wicked? What? God is not vengeful. Oh, wow. And you must know that God is not difficult. God is not difficult. God is not difficult. Someone says, but I've been trying to have a child for five years. Why has God not answered me? That's the pain. Because you think God is the one that is behind your problem. God is not behind your problem. God is for you. God is not difficult. Maybe you've been trying. Maybe your spiritual life has gone. And the reason I'm saying so is that when people have protracted time of prayer and nothing is happening, it makes them to begin to feel hopeless. It makes them to feel disconnected from God. Then even if they were burning in passion, in prayer, all of a sudden they begin to lose their passion for prayer. Anytime you're praying and nothing is changing, check the mindset. Kenneth Hagin said a story about a man who was very sick and he went to pray for him. He laid hands on the man and the way that God will walk with Kenneth Hagin, the healing power of God will flow like energy, electricity through his hands and touch his body. And Kenneth Hagin said when he touched the man's body, he knew that the power of God had flowed. But something strange happened that never happened before. As the power of God touched his body, the power of God returned into his right hand. And he said, wow, how did that happen? Then he went to pray. He told the wife that Something is wrong. And the Lord told him, he said, the man is going to die, even though you prayed for him. And he said, why is the man going to die? And he said this. He said, certain laws of the spirit has been put into action. That right now, your prayer cannot reverse them again. Then Kenegin said, wow. So Kenegin called, he called, what they call it? He called the wife. He said, this is what the Lord told me. Do you know what this means? He said, yes. He said, my husband had always said he would die at 40 years old. His father would die at 40. His father died at 40. His grandfather died at 40. His older brother died at 40. His, you know, his younger, his, um, his two older brothers died at 40. So he had always said he would die at 40. How old is he right now? He'll be 40 next month. Oh, can I say now I understand. See, it's not as if God could not answer the prayer, but there was a mentality that was blocking that prayer. The question is this, what mentality is blocking you from receiving? What's mentality? We know what the Bible says. The Bible says, with God, all things are possible. He says, all things are possible to them that believe. And you must be careful of the mindset. Why? You become what you believe. John chapter 1 verse 12. You become what you believe. The Bible says, as many as believed on him, he gave the power to become. You become what you believe. If you believe you can be married, then you can be married. If you believe that Nigeria is hard, Nigeria is hard. If you believe that your marriage is difficult, marriage is difficult. What do you believe? Because you become what you believe. In fact, in the principle of prayer, in Mark chapter 11, verse 24, he says, you receive what you believe. Even in prayer, you receive what you believe. He said, believe that you shall, but, but, and whatever you pray, believe you shall receive them, and you shall have them. It's what you believe, you receive. So the question is, that what do you believe? I know that you are praying with your mouth, and you're saying, I want this change. I want that change. But the question is this. What do you believe? What do you believe? Glory to God. Your belief is very powerful. Your belief determines what you see. Your belief determines what you see. Your belief system determines what you see. This is what the Bible says in John chapter 11 verse 40. The Bible says that Jesus Christ don't matter. It says, if thou wouldest believe, you will see the glory of God. For you to see the glory of God, you have to believe it first. I understand that your child has some problems that cannot work. But can you see your child working? I understand that you've been dealing with this nicotine addiction for five years. But can you see yourself free? I understand that you run a small shop, a small business in a shop. But can you see the massive expansion? What can you see? That's why you are here. Because God wants to change what you see by his word. And Jesus said, he said in John chapter 11 verse 40. And Jesus said to her, 
said I not unto you, if thou believest, if thou believest, if thou believest, thou will see the glory of God. You know why I'm saying this? This was the same Jesus that told them when Lazarus got sick. He said, this sickness is not unto death. Yes or no? Tell me, yes or no? He said, this sickness is not unto death. Did Lazarus die or no? Lazarus died. Even when it got worse, Jesus what was still steadfast. Hey, come on, yeah, 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 yeah. It can get worse. It will only get better. Even if it gets worse, it will only get better. Because God's word cannot fail. I said God's word cannot fail. I said God's word cannot fail. Oh, if you believe, shout amen. amen. He said forever, oh Lord, thy word is settled. God's word cannot fail. No way. No way. Not a million times. He said, heaven and earth may pass away. He said, but my word, my word, my word, it will be established strong. You know why I'm saying this? There are some people that hear things have gotten really bad. Things have gotten really bad. And you wonder, didn't God say something? Even when it gets bad, if thou wouldest believe, you will see the glory of God. I want to ask you, you're praying about marriage, but can you see it? You're praying about a child, can you see it? You're praying for a healing miracle, can you see it? <laughs> One lady told me, she, she said, she said, this is during next level prayer. I, and I want to ask you, tomorrow, next level prayer will be very powerful. 6.30 a.m. in the morning. We're going to be declaring grace, grace, grace. This is my story. Somebody say grace. grace. Somebody say grace. grace. Somebody say grace. grace. Say this is my story. I want to ask you a question. How can the first things you say in the morning be grace, 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 this is my story. And your life will not be supernatural. Your word alone will channel, correct, redirect the pattern of your life. Oh, glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. What you, what you believe determines what you see. The lady said in wine press, he said, he, she, she said this, he said, you were praying and you said someone had a, 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 a tumor, like a fried blood in the stomach. Come on. He said, after, after next level prayers, I felt like going to the restroom. Then all of a sudden, it was a big thing. Then something big came out of me. I look into the restroom. I'm like, what? Did this come out of me? The question is that, how can prayer bring out that kind of growth? That is the power of the Holy Ghost. Yesterday, you saw, as we were praying, all of a sudden, someone came with crutches from a bone something, got up with the crutches. And the, another lady that had some accident from my pelkuta got up. And the lady had that, got up and they said walking. And miracles were all over the place. I was reading, I was, they were showing me the, 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 the they were showing me today. Uh, a la the lady that said that, he said, I held my breast. The lump was in my breast. He said, the lump disappeared while I was holding my breast. He said, I can't sleep. He said, this is too much. Where did he go to? That is the power of the Holy Ghost. The problem is that you are trying to think, how will it happen? God is not a mathematician. God is beyond a mathematician. He said the righteous of faith does not say, who shall go down into hell to bring down Jesus Christ? Or who shall ascend into heaven to bring him from the dead? He said the word is near thee. He's even in thy mouth. If thou shalt believe and confess unto salvation, somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Whatever you believe determines what you see. So the reason why some people don't see is because they don't believe. Question, can you really, can you see it? You know, one time, someone close to me went to Dubai. And he came back and told me, he said, and this is very funny. He said, I said, did you enjoy your trip to Dubai? He said, no, 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 I don't. I didn't rather. He said, it's not a great place. It's not a fantastic place. It's not this. It's not that. And told me, all of these not nice things. And I'm like, where did you go to? But because of the state of his mind, because of his financial state and the state of his mind, when he traveled, he only saw what his mind allowed him to see. Do you know there are some people here, when they go into a very great mall, if they see Louis Vuitton store, they don't have the faith to enter it. 
Because in their mind, this store is not my level. In fact, when you tell them that, oh, did you see the Gucci store? They say, is there a Gucci store there? The reason why is that you see what you believe because your mindset doesn't think you are belong to that class. You will not recognize it. The question is this, and this is a question. What do you see? Your belief will determine what you see. Your belief will determine what you see. And the bad, this is the worst one. Whatever you don't believe in yourself, people will not see in you. I was, I, I, I was going through um, um, just walk, walking on YouTube and I saw a minister sharing. And he said, I think he said that he, when he was a student, he didn't have school fees to pay. And the nature of the school, they will put you outside, you can't write the examination hall. He said when he was staying outside and waiting for a miracle to happen, another student came and when the student saw him, the student said, Hallelujah! And he wondered what happened. He said, I prayed in the hostel that even though I don't have school fees, if by chance I can see my pastor and I can hold his hands, nobody will stop me from writing the examination, even though I don't have money. And the student held his hands, entered, and nobody stopped him. 30 minutes after, the pastor looked in the auditorium, saw the student really writing the exam. He said, ah, ah, me, I'm here. They tap into my grace. They are using it to write the exam. Me, I have grace. I've not tapped into it. Are you sure I don't lack consciousness? It's not that you don't have it, but are you conscious of what you have? Peter said to the man at the temple, he said, silver or gold I have not. He said, but such as I have. He said, Peter, hey, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 We look ordinary, but we are not ordinary. The Bible says Christ in us is the hope of glory. The Bible says Christ in us is the hope of glory. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. They say you are too young, too young in real estate. They say nobody has done this in your family. Don't worry, don't worry. They say, how can you face them? He will tell them, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. I said, somebody shout hallelujah. I said, somebody shout hallelujah. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Doctor said, your fallopian tube is blocked. You said, doctor, I understand. But the Bible says, whose report will you believe? We shall believe the report of the Lord. Oh, glory to God. I said, glory to God. They say you are in your 40s, who will marry you? He said, I understand what you said, but the Bible says all things are possible to him that believe it. Oh, glory to God. They say you can't break the cocaine addiction. You can't break the sexual addiction. You will tell them, for the Lord, the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. If you believe it, shout amen. If you believe it, shout amen. If you believe, shout amen. What? No, it doesn't matter how you came. You are leaving this place with a miracle. 